trying to look at a recent trip that we seventh grade science students took to the Chesapeake Bay. And before we start, I'm going to look at a bird's eye view or a satellite view of the Chesapeake Bay uh, with it going up the centre of the uh, slide here. Pause to look at it in more detail. Then we look at the water watershed, the grey blue area in the middle uh, with uh, a surface area of 166,000 square kilometres, about the size of Tunisia uh, or Uruguay, right? or twice the size of Austria, twice the size of the United Arab Emirates, or twice the size of Scotland. And it includes the whole of Washington DC and parts of the states of Delaware, Maryland, New York, Pennsylvania, Virginia and West Virginia, and includes 150 ri rivers and streams. Now, the Chesapeake Bay was formed uh, when there was a meteor impact over 35 million years ago during the Eocene period and the earth was actually covered in forests with some marine life and with the evolution of some uh, modern bird orders. And uh, for a long while, uh, the uh, ocean didn't go right up uh, to the Susquehanna and that required uh, a sea rise uh, after the melting of the Ice Age uh, 10,000 years ago. And you can look at how the continents looked um, a little bit before that, 50 million years ago. And so here we have a little bit more information uh, with a little marker showing where our destination was and its tidal. Uh, it's uh, a wetland, contains salt, but less salt than in uh, full seawater in the Atlantic Ocean, called brackish water. And the saltiness is resupplied from uh, outside the Chesapeake Bay as the tide rises and the salt water goes in. And the benefit of wetlands on the uh, periphery of the Chesapeake Bay, they reduce storm surges and uh, absorb the plants, absorb and filter pollutants. Uh, and so do some of the animals. Uh, and on the right hand side, uh, you've got the change in salinity from X furthest inland uh, down to Y uh, where the Chesapeake Bay is meeting the Atlantic Ocean. And you can pause to look more closely at that. And so our location um, coming over the Bay Bridge and then a few miles beyond uh, with uh, a right turn. More closely at the area of the Chesapeake Bay Environmental Centre and the dotted line on the map is showing where the intrepid kayakers went. Uh, uh, it, it, wasn't just a single route, we returned by the same one and uh, got out at the same point. And uh, tidal wetlands found all the way along the shores of the Chesapeake Bay and lower salt content than the main part of the Atlantic Ocean. Then we'll just have a little look at uh, uh, some ecology with a, a water bird food web uh, so there are some uh, birds that we might have seen that with so many paddlers, I think we scared most of them away. And then look at what their uh, food items are, uh, because they'll come in a, a little bit later, like now. So here are some uh, marine animals, uh, some fish. And you can pause to look at uh, each of these and there will be many others as well and it may be uh, the, act, the activity is to find um, three more for, from each of the five 
categories that are there. And then looking at marine and terrestrial plants. Uh, so water grass. Um, again, you can pause to read these, look at the differences of them. And they were underwater, so we wouldn't be seeing those. And then some of the trees on land and the grasses on land and which ones do you remember seeing? And also here, uh, important about dissolved oxygen, because once you get over eutrophication, uh, the amount of oxygen diminishes and certain species can't survive. in a line two by two, okay? Because that's the way that we're going to load on the dock to get on the boat. Because there's certain organisms that eat cattails that can eat rat mice.
So with very many thanks to Washington International School and their middle school science teachers and indeed the seventh grade uh, science students. Uh,